Hey, are you ready to listen to my BNA review? That's the intro. You better fucking like it. Yo, what's up, guys? This is Sonic XD here, and today I'm gonna just chill and talk about whatever I want about brand new animal. If you guys are expecting a very professional IGN review of the anime, um, I'm hoping not to let you guys down too much. <laughs> uh, I was planning on getting this review out by the time BNA like just came out on Netflix, so like two weeks ago, but uh, I was busy with like other things, so it kind of got delayed. Sadly, I have lost to Saber Spark. Boo hoo. So, I know a lot of people wanted me to talk about this, so I'm excited and I'm going to get into my BNA review now. Spoiler free! I'll get into spoilers later on in this video, but we're gonna start with, with a spoiler free review. Basic synopsis. Uh, we got a worldview where there are humans and beastmen's and beastmen's are looked down upon in this world they are the minorities so the beastmen form their own city called anima city where they can live in harmony and sing kumbaya our main character uh, who was a human accidentally turned into a beastman and so because she does not want to be looked down upon by humans she decides to run to the anima city and live there happily except things obviously do not go that well and also there's this hot werewolf character that will pop up eventually so i heard you had two opinions about this anime you either liked it or you didn't really like it, um, but you still appreciated some aspects of it, but overall you didn't really enjoy your experience. And I am, well, I personally may have liked it a little too much. <laughs> well, anyways, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Let me start by just slowly talking about the pros and the cons as we go. So let me start off by saying, well, first off, this is freaking Trigger we're talking about. So their action is legendary. Like, it's freaking Trigger, okay? So you so you can expect the Trigger amount of quality that we're going to get from here. If, you, if you've seen any Trigger stuff, then you know the kind of action we're going to get, basically. I think Trigger alone should trigger you to want to watch this. <laughs> <clears throat> Why am I turning into a boomer? <laughs> character designs, now I don't know if this is gonna offend too many people, but I think the character designs in BNA are like B tier. Like it's not too bad, but it's nothing like too special. Just just it's just it's just average, it's pretty good. Like if I were to say Zootopia was S tier and like I don't know, re-zero background characters are like C tier and Sing is D tier, then I would say like BNA is um somewhat around like in a B tier. Except for Michiru, Shiro, Nazuna, the weasel girl, I mean the Minx girl, Teba from Breath of the Wild, and this one mystery character. These five characters are S tier. S tier. They are so awesome. I love their designs. These guys are just mwah. Yes, I, I think these guys are freaking S tier designs in my book. And if Shiro, an already S tier character, does not wear the big coat and just wears the black shirt, that is S plus tier. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really like Shiro with the black shirt. Now I'm going to talk about the characters themselves. Now there's a lot of characters, but I want to just focus on Michiru and Shiro because they are the main characters and they are the main focus of who we're following in the story. And I want to say I did not really like them in the beginning. Well, I'll start by Mich saying Michiru. Michiru is mm, kind of a brat. Uh, <laughs> it's a little hard to explain, but like basically she has that uh, main character mentality where she, she, she believes that she has to do the right thing no matter what the situation is. So she has to put herself in harm's way in order to do the right thing, which causes her to get into multiple troubles and Shiro has to basically save her ass multiple times because, well, she's arrogant and she believes that what she's doing is the right thing. Now, if this were Kill a Kill and if Ryuku did all these sorts of things, like getting herself into all these sorts of troubles and getting herself almost killed so many times, I'd be fine with that because Ryuku Ryuku is this hot-headed punk who doesn't care much and just wants to find the murderer of her father. So I would believe Ryuku would do all these sorts of things, but Michiru? She is a regular high school student who plays basketball, and that's a very important characteristic part that I will get more into in my spoiler talk. We'll get I'll tell you guys more about the basketball thing. It's very important. It's all around the posters and all that kind of stuff. It's very important. Well, I'll get into that later. And she accidentally turned into a beastman, and you're gonna tell me that she's gonna willingly want to take on terrorists. Like no, and that just makes it feel like she's a bit of a brat. And as for Shiro, if Todoroki had a persona, that would literally be Shiro. Their personalities, like they're cool, they don't talk too much, they handle the situation smoothly, they have very sad backstories, and they're very calm, but when they get angry, they really, really show how angry they are. Yeah, I just find, I just, I literally think Todoroki is like the exact same character as Shiro. I think Shiro is very cool, but like, he's kind of a blank slate other than that, and I was feeling like, eh, he's just, 
cool, but that's about it. But I will say at a certain point in the animes, as the episodes go on, I do slowly like these characters. And I actually, by the end of the show, I really love Shiro and Michiru. Uh, I'll get to more about this in the spoiler talks, but just so you know, the character growth with these two are fantastic in my opinion, and I think they're one of the best things about this show. Okay, and now I'm gonna get into the meat of this review. I'm going to be talking about the story and the worldview at the same time. So when I was first watching BNA, I was thinking, okay, here we go again. This is gonna be another don't be a prejudice type kind of story. Humans and beastmen aren't that different, and they should coexist and love each other kind of a story. Like, I feel like, okay, I I felt like that was what's gonna happen. Um, and boy, was I wrong. <laughs> uh, this story is uh, a little bit more complicated than I expected. Uh, okay, how about this? Let me give you guys a little bit of a taste of like what, what goes on in the story and what's the worldview of this anima city. <clears throat> so first off, we have our humans and then we have our beast men, right? Plain and simple. Okay, and then we also have our anti-beastmen beastmen who are beastmen who are hired by humans to do bad things to beastmen because the humans hate the beastmen. We have angry beastmen who are basically beastmen who will get more emotional and more angry who will basically become more alpha male-like and fight each other. They're basically the carnivores and beast stars. And then we have gangsters and then we have poor people and then we have religion <laughs> which by the way did you know that the main priest of the religious group is voiced by the same voice actor as Dio Ri Ri Ri. <laughs> And you got Michiru in the middle of all this, trying to make sense of it all. I was kind of shocked of how much they're bringing into this worldview. Like, I thought it, like they wouldn't be able to handle this much topics going around. But as it turns out, all the things that I said here, like, they kind of intertwine nicely together. And by the end of the show, I do feel satisfied for what they try to go with. Like, they don't resolve everything, but at least I felt satisfied by the end of it. Because of how complicated and interesting the worldview is, I would put it on the A tier for the anthropomorphic worldview tier list. You know, this tier list looks kind of fun. Maybe I'll do a video about it in the future. And with all these conflicts going on, there's also like a mystery element going on that they got to kind of solve and you got to kind of find out like what's the main issue that's going around in the city and how are we going to resolve it? So in my opinion, this is where people will split about how they feel about BNA. Because like most people I hear when they talk about BNA is they either like it or they don't like it. And I think the main point is the story. Or you could actually just just don't give a shit about the story and just watch a bunch of animal people beat each other up and have fun with that. In my opinion, I like the story as a whole. Like, I felt like it had its problems, but overall, I liked it. In fact, I liked it probably more than the average people who like BNA, in my opinion. I will say one problem that I had that I hear some people talk about, like my roommate has the same problem with this is, I think it could have used more episodes. I think this show would have worked much better as 24 episodes because the show kind of starts off like slice of life-ish and we're just looking at the world of BNA. We're just looking at Animal City and see like uh, how it is and how their lives work and stuff like that and that's fun and I really liked all that kind of stuff but at a point in the show it just goes full force into the main plot like uh, we only have six more episodes left so that's just hard to focus on the main plot and all these other cool things about the worldview we are just gonna push aside because we need to focus on the main plot now and in my opinion I really wished we could have seen more of the world I really wish we could have seen more of the characters but for what it does I still think it's good I just do think this would have worked much better as a 24 episode series a uh, good example again I'm gonna bring up is I think Kill a Kill does this perfectly. I think the fact that Kill a Kill had 24 episodes makes it work much better. And all the things that I mentioned that BNA could have been better with, I think I think it works so much better in Kill a Kill because Kill a Kill has 25 episodes. Okay, now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the music. Uh, it's good. This isn't like my professional area. Like I can't really judge like, oh, the sounds and how amazing they, they do the songs and yada yada and stuff like that. Like that's not my area, but I will say I enjoyed it for the most part. I think it's good. I think the OP is good too. Too, and I think the ED is freaking awesome. I love Night Running. That song is so good. Oh, I love that song so much. <laughs> Not only do I like the song itself a lot, I also really like the lyrics. Like the meaning of the song in Night Running like really, really reflects the arc that Michiru goes through in BNA and stuff like that. And I think it, they do a really great job reflecting that through the song and I'm, I'm really impressed. And I also really liked how they used Night Running in the anime itself because the song actually does play in the anime and I really liked how they used that. Okay, I'm gonna get into spoilers now, spoilers! So if you have not seen BNA, then I would recommend you guys then just jump ahead to my conclusion. For now, I'm going to get into spoilers. I'll start by talking about what I mean by why I think Michiru was a brat. 
So in episode one, that's fine because she just shows up in Anima City. So all the chaos that happens to her just happened to happen. So I'm fine that she got herself in that trouble in that way. In episode two, Shiro tells her, you need your ID. So please go register it. And she's like, uh, nah, I'm going to go look for my wallet because I have my ID in there. And then she gets tangled up in some mafia business and Shiro saves her. And how does Michiru thank him? By basically declaring how much she hates Beastmen. Okay, uh, that's a really interesting way of being grateful for the person who saved your life. But anyways, we're moving on. In episode 3, Shiro can't handle this annoying child, so he throws her into a room. And she gets saved by the mayor. <laughs> so lucky Michiru. So what does Michiru want to do right after this? Uh, she wants to go help Shiro handle a bunch of bomb terrorists! Great idea! <laughs> and I, what I really found annoying about that episode, because it's not like it's a bad episode, but like Michiru had to get saved by Shiro. And at a point where Shiro's like, please stop following me. At this point, this mission is very dangerous. Please go to somewhere safe. And Michiru's like, no, I gotta help because that's the right thing to do. And she was like, okay, fine. And she doesn't help and she has to get saved by Shiro again. <laughs> Shiro like freaking jumps off a building for her. <laughs> like, come on. <sighs> This is terrible. And then in episode 4, the mayor is like, Oh, thank you for helping Shiro by basically um, sabotaging yourself so many times. But here's a phone as a reward. Michiru is like, Oh, cool, but uh, I can't use the internet on it. Yeah, it's forbidden here. But uh, I want to use Instagram. So I'm going to get a phone through illegal ways. And yay, I finally get to use Instagram. And oh no, I get captured by the gangsters. And I go to another island to go on a party. And Shiro has to fucking drive a boat to pick me up. Bitch, could you, <laughs> could you seriously be less irresponsible? Like, at this point, when I was watching the show, I was like, Okay, Shiro, you really need to, like, sit down and either, like, scold her, or you guys need, like, a training montage, because, like, I am getting sick and tired of how much of a brat Michu is. Like, oh, I gotta do the right thing, so I gotta literally keep putting myself in trouble. Like, come on, girl. Stop it. Episode 5 is perfect, so we're not gonna talk about that. Oh, but I do want to talk about one thing. Remember when I said that the whole basketball thing will come into play? Well, no, it does not. It freaking does not come into play throughout the whole entire show. No! I really thought that they were gonna do something with basketball because Michiru has that interest and it's in the posters and she has that hobby, but instead they play baseball! What the heck? <laughs> Anyways, I just find that to be kind of funny. And in episode 6, she gets involved into a religious cult. Great freaking job. But I want to say I love episode 6. Why do I love episode 6? Because Nazuna freaking scolds her. Yes! Oh my gosh, I love that. So in episode 6, we see Michiru go to the religious group and finds out that Nazna's there and wants to reconnect with her. And at the same time, she wants to get her out of this shady religious group and stuff like that. But at the end of the episode, Nazna straight up calls out Michiru. And I freaking love it. She tells her that she thinks that whenever something wrong happens, that she has to use her own justice to solve the problem. But Nazuna assures her that she is doing this all on her own will, that she knows that the religious group is fake, but she wants to still do this because she thinks that this is the right thing to do. But Michiru doesn't care about how that how Nazuna feels, doesn't care about the situation. She just wants Nazuna out of there because she thinks that they're wrong and that's why that she has to go save her and Nazuna is not having it. Whenever something happened, you were always the first one to jump right in without thinking. You're still the same. You imagine things, jump in, make a judgment, decide that you feel sorry for other people and then go and feel good about yourself for helping out even though no one asked you to. Aren't you just doing this to feel good about yourself? And I freaking love that. And this actually still reflects later on in the series too. Michiru like runs into the hospital because she thinks that Nazna is in trouble. And it turns out Nazna is just having a test. And then later on when the Nevosia syndrome is revealed, she tries to like stop Shiro because that's what she thinks is right. This is her character flaw and she has to find a way to grow out of it. Not everything she thinks is right is always the right decision to do. And Nazna calls her out on it. And then their friendship kind of breaks from there. And I also really like the relationship between Nazna and Michiru because they slowly try to reconnect through the episodes, Michiru slowly starts to accept her. Nazna slowly starts to open up to Michiru more, and they slowly, slowly become friends again. And I really, really like that about the show. And by episode 7, I finally accept Michiru for doing the missions and doing all that sorts of things. Because Shiro asks for Michiru's help. And at that point, I was like, okay, Michiru, I'm finally fine with you risking your life doing stupid things because Shiro now can depend on you. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I'm starting to like Michiru, and I'm fine if Michiru wants to do stupid things and give her life to save people, because Shiro now can depend on you, and Shiro actually, like, accepts you. And that was the point where I start to slowly like Michiru. As for Shiro, I start to like Shiro after I hear his backstory. 
that's when I'm like, okay, I'm starting to like see your character, I'm starting to empathize more with you, and I'm starting to slowly sort of like you. And from that point on, up to the last episode, it's just the uphill of how much I start liking these characters. Next, I want to talk about the, I'm going to butcher this name for sure, the Nervasia Syndrome. Nervasia Syndrome. I thought this was a very great plot point. In fact, this is basically what the show was leading up to. Like, what's all the mystery building up to was basically the Nervasia Syndrome. And I really liked how it really, really hurt Shiro, especially because of his backstory, where, like, it wasn't the humans who killed the animal people. It was basically they killed themselves and all that kind of stuff. My favorite line that came out between when Alan was explaining it to Michiru and Shiro, Alan said to Shiro, what other option do you have? Would you rather be a human or would you rather die? And then Shiro says, this is none of your human businesses. This is our own problems. You humans are, you're always like this. You feel the need to oppress Beastmen and you do it by force. If we don't do something, Beastmen will kill each other. Are you okay with that? I'm not gonna let a damn human make that decision. I love that. I felt that. I was like, yes, this is a conflict that I really, really freaking love. Sadly, I knew a Wreck-It Ralph was going to happen. And what I mean by that is in Wreck-It Ralph, uh, there was a plot line where, well, Wreck-It Ralph spoilers, where Vanellope is a glitch and then like the, the king shows up and he's like, well, you see, Vanellope cannot be a racer, not because we don't want her to be a racer, but because she's a glitch and people are going to think that the game is broken and then they're going to basically like uh, unplug the game, which is fine for all us video game characters. We can escape the game, but because she's a glitch, so she can't escape the game and she has to stay in there. And when you unplug the game, you die in the game. And because of that, Ralph then has to destroy Vanellope. Penelope's car, it takes a really dark turn. I thought that was really, really dark and that was really, really good. Even though it turns out that was all a lie and actually Penelope was the main character of the video game, blah, 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 you go to me. But my point is, if they had went with that original plot line, that movie would have been much more dark. And the same applies for BNA. I really wish that the Nervasia Syndrome would have actually made a much bigger impact. They would have made an even harder choices for the characters and stuff like that. I would kind of wish that like by the end of the show, like half the Beastmen decide that they don't want to have this so they, they turn into humans, whereas the half the Beastmen want to keep their dignity so they have to live with this and that kind of a situation. Like I would have liked if that was the case, which is why I really like Beast Stars because that kind of is the case in that show. <laughs> So anyways, I want to get into Alan, the main villain of the show. I kind of liked Alan. I thought he was interesting because while we're going through the show, we were kind of like examining, okay, so who's the villain of the show? Is it like the prime minister of the humans? Is it the Dio priest? Or is it like Alan? Or are they working with someone even more higher? I thought Alan was working for somebody bad. That was always what I thought. But Alan was the main villain of the show. And get ready for our triple Shyamalan twists coming up here. Our first twist is that Alan is the main villain. And from the looks of it, the reason why he wants to turn the Beastmen into humans is because he's a super racist and he hates Beastmen. So that's why he wants to turn them all into humans. At least that was what it seems like at the beginning. But then it turns out Shyamalan plot twist number two, dun dun dun. Alan was a Beastman himself all along. <gasps> Nani? It turns out the reason why he wants to turn all the Beastmen into humans is because they are not pure beastmen. That's right. I, uh, all the beastmen that you see right now in the city, they are all hybrid beastmen, which are basically like different beastmen have been mating with each other and creating basically hybrids. And it's because of this hybrids that the Nervosia syndrome actually happened. And that's why Alan despises them. And Alan himself is like a pure beastman. They've always been keeping the bloodline the same. And that's why they don't have the Nervosia syndrome and the other beastmen have it. And that's why he looks down upon the other beastmen. And that's why he wants to get rid of them. So first off, uh, Alan is Targaryen confirmed. <laughs> but the second thing is, I thought this plotline actually kind of reminded me of... Ben 10, uh, the, the the version where Ben 10 is like grown up, because there was kind of the same plot line going on in that with like the they're called the hybrids, I believe, like because they also are like the high up aliens and they want to like eradicate everyone else because they're not pure and they're not hybrid like they are. So that was the main conflict in the Ben 10 show. Funny enough, they actually kind of resolved the problem in that show, similar to how they resolve it in BNA. So I want to get back to BNA. I want to talk a little bit more about the character design again because my final mystery character, who I said that I thought was also S tier, is Alan but not necessarily his Beastman form. Now, his Beastman form looks fine. In fact, it reminds me of a very certain uh, series that I cannot say what it is because if I did, that would really, really hurt my own reputation. So uh, I'll just I'll just say that it reminds me of a certain series, but I, but I just cannot say. But what I really, really liked as for character design is Alan's 
god beast mode looking thing. The three-headed golden dog thingy. I really like that design. That thing looked really cool. A Super Saiyan three-headed doggy thing. I, I like that. It looked really cool in my opinion. Now the other thing that I really liked about this, this design is that it, it obviously is reminiscent of like the Greek mythology three-headed dog uh, Cerebus because they also mentioned like before in the series that the ultra beast form characters were like preserved like as gods back in the day so that's why people think like Anubis was a god but he was just one of these ultra beast characters and stuff like that which is why like Alden looks like Cerebus and I thought that was kind of cool how they sneaked in that little design factor. Side note, I like Shiro's god design, a uh, Jinro's design. I think that looks really good too. I also like the Nervosia Syndrome Jinro design, which only happens for about like five seconds in the show, but I thought that thing looked really cool too. Okay, back to the plot. So, Shiro defeats Alan, and then Shyamalan plot twist number three, it turns out Alan had the Nervosia Syndrome too. His whole character motive, his whole reasoning for hating all these hybrids, all crumbles down because he himself has the Nervosia Syndrome too. How ironic. <laughs> and just when Shiro is about to give the finishing blow, he remembers the ways of the air nomads and decides to let the Fire Lord live because that is the way of their culture. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically like how I feel about the overall story. As I stated, I like it. But I also know people who don't like it. My roommate doesn't like the second half of the show. My brother likes the show all up until the last episode. Like, he thinks the last episode is basically written by a little kindergarten kid. Like, <laughs> like he hates that last episode. And I can get it. I, I feel like a lot of these episodes, like, felt a little rushed, too. Rushed and not in the sense that they came out rushed, but rushed in the sense because there was only 12 episodes to explain all these sorts of things. Me, personally, I think it was still fine, and I still liked it. But that's just my personal opinion. One last thing I want to talk about uh, that I think is kind of funny is the moral of the story. Because at first it felt more like, oh, don't be prejudiced towards minorities. Everyone's the same, love each other, kind of a moral. But at the end, I think the moral of the story is take your vaccine. Unless if it's the wrong kind, then take the other one. <laughs> I guess that's the moral of the story. I I'm sure the moral of the story is still don't be a prejudice, but like I think it's kind of funny that the, the vaccine thing kind of plays in. So I guess Karens will not really like BNA then. <laughs> okay, that's all I'm going to talk about for spoilers. Um, I actually have a lot more I can talk about, but I'm going to stop because I feel like this video would drag on like even longer if I keep on going. Oh, now I'm going to give my small BNA dub review. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not a dub person, I'm more of a sub person, so my opinion about English dubs aren't like, I'm not like that big on giving like opinions about English dubs. Like, it's good. I, I, I watched a couple of episodes and I think it's fine. If you want to watch this show with English speaking, I think it's good and I think you guys will still enjoy it. And the main thing I should talk about about the BNI dub is that, uh, congratulations to Ben Diskinson and getting a row in another anthropomorphic show again. And this time he actually got the main freaking character. So congratulations, congratulations, Ben Diskinson. Uh, at this point, I am not going to be shocked when they announce that you're going to be in Zootopia 2. I am expecting that. So, overall, would I recommend this anime? Yes. It has good action, good characters, but I think the story is where people are going to feel a little more, a bit more divide. And I can't 100% tell you whether or not you would like this story, but... I did. I think for the characters and the action alone, and the worldview, I think it's still very worth watching. Also, if you're a certain type of person, I think you will really, really, really love this anime. I love this anime, and I actually really hope that they make a season 2 of it, because I think there's actually a really great potential of making a season 2 of BNA. If you're still not really sure if you want to start this show or not, I would recommend watching episode 1. Episode 1 does a great job. It's giving you an introduction to the worldview, and it has great action scenes, and see if you like the show based off of how you feel about episode one if you still don't know how you feel about the show or if you're just not gonna plan to watch the show i would still recommend at least checking out episode five episode five is amazing it's the perfect episode in this whole entire show it's the perfect amount of action the perfect amount of comedy and it actually is quite emotional too it's just such an awesome episode you can actually just choose to watch this episode and not watch bna that's how amazing i think that episode was and as for a rating for this show i would uh, 10 out of 10 <laughs> No, I would rate it probably like an 8 out of 10. A very close to 9 8 out of 10, but like an 8 out of 10. And an 8.9 out of 10, basically. That's, that's how I would rate this show. Okay, uh, that's all I have to say. I don't know how to end this video. Hmm. Oh, I know. If you like Night Running, then go listen to Amy. Amy is the singer of Night Running, and she does some amazing other songs. Her name is spelled A-A-A-M-Y-Y-Y. -Y -Y, triple A-M, triple Y. Uh, it's a funny name, but her songs are amazing. Okay, that's the video. That's the video! Thank you for watching! Bye!